Hi, I'm Ken Lewis with Tomasi Studios. Today I'm going to show you how to make a drive wheel for a treadmill motor, probably for a 72 inch belt grinder. And over the course of this video, you're going to see my shirt change about three times because the battery in my camera kept dying. Clearly, I need a new camera. But I can't get one until you like and subscribe. So the first step is just to take the drive wheel off the motor. Uh, not only does this protect the motor, but it'll make your life so much easier. I, of course, am in, absolutely in love with my own bench vise, but um, a good pair of vice grips will do the thing. Treadmills, as an industry standard, are reverse thread, so it's going to be righty loosey, and they are literally finger tight. There's no real tools involved here other than the clamps. So, uh, good, good news, bad news. The good news is that these electric motors do have an industry standard on the size right here. Uh, the, the thread size, I should say. This 2.5 horsepower motor has the same um, bolt size, reverse thread, as this 2.65 treadmill motor. But, this little connection right here, which is easily the crux of the whole process, uh, does not have an in industry standard. Uh, when I was putting on this guy, it had a 33 millimeter uh, end cap. This is nowhere near 33 millimeters. So the first tool that I use on this guy is my calipers. Now uh, there's actually kind of a trick to using a caliper on a cylinder to find out maximum diameter. Instead of coming at it kind of straight, which can be a little deceptive, give it a, just a little bit of an angle there, and they get the maximum diameter just that way. And that's going to be 28 and a half millimeters. That's just over one and an eighth inches. Merka. So the second thing I need are my hole saws. Uh, this is $15 eBay purchase, and I'm looking, uh, looking, 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 that actually looks pretty close. So after just kind of sifting through my, my hole saw apparatus, this hole saw is exactly 28 millimeters. This is 28 and a half millimeters. So this is slightly smaller than this. So in the end, what I actually need to do is make a wood donut that just barely fits with force over this uh, connection here, and that's step one. So easily the most important tool in this project is a drill press, preferably one from World War II. I mean, if you want. A new one will work. Not as cool. Just saying. Second thing you need. Okay, second thing you need is actually going to be um, some actual, real good hardwood. This is obviously I've taken things out of this before. This is a, a salvage piece of wood that I grabbed. This is actually uh, oak laminated in mahogany. That's better than what you're probably likely to find. It's also probably better than what you really need. What you need to do is get yourself uh, some wood pallets, find some boards that are wide enough for your hole saw, and they're also very, very straight. <sighs> Unless it's uh, laminated plywood, it's uh, usually a good hardwood oak. Another option you have is if you can find uh, some salvaged furniture, this is also oak. The best way to find out if uh, what you're working on is actual hardwoods and not just standard pine is when you go to cut it with uh, preferably something like a circular saw or a scale saw or anything like that. The fibers that come off the wood are going to come out in really long strands as opposed to a powder. A powder is a good indication of pine. The long strands is a good indicator of hardwoods. So for this actual project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to get it 
90% all the way through and then I'm going to switch over to the 1 and 1 8 inch uh, hole saw for the actual center and then both are going to be marked by this center bit and that's how all of this is going to be perfectly balanced. Okay, so my holes are, like I said, 90% uh, drilled through. Also, what I said about the sawdust, you know, I will swear to that in court. This is really crazy tough wood, but the reason that I tell people always use hardwoods when doing something like this is that they are that, hardwoods. This thing's going to be spinning around at two, 300 RPM, and I don't want it exploding in my face. So my next step is to uh, actually let that cool down. Then I'm going to attach the 1 and 1 8 drill bit and that's going to be my center one. I'm only going to drill through hopefully one, one and a half of these because I still want to have as much structure in the end when I'm done. So now I have the internal circumference of what I need to actually attach to the drive wheel. This down here is the exact same drill bit, is the exact same drill bit holes, and what's going to happen is, is that these holes are actually going to be somewhat self-centering. So you can be a couple of millimeters off when you bring this down, please avoid that if you can, but if you are, it's actually going to push itself back to center. That's one of the fun things about using something that uh, incorporates a circle. So this is step one. This guy's going all the way through. This is step two. I'm actually going to have to take my Forstner bit and I'm going to get it about halfway through because I still need as much structure here as I possibly can. Then this cover is just getting cut out. It's uh, literally going to add the most possible outer structure that it possibly can. Mm -hmm. 